All right, Mr. Wheaton, we are live for the world to see. Hello, world. How was your uh, trip to Seattle? Oh, it was it was very lovely. Uh, oh, and then the eclipse was going on, and we actually dodged the eclipse by um, we 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 went to Oregon for the beach. Right. And realized that the eclipse was going to be happening, you know, not while we're there, but like the day after, like the day that we're leaving, kind of a thing, or something like no, the day after we're leaving. So there's thousands yeah. of people there. Well, as we're driving in, we're in Washington State, we're crossing the border into Oregon, there's a, one of those signs. It says, you know, tune your radio if these lights are flashing. And they were totally flashing. Ah! Ah! Danger! Danger! Okay. So we tuned the radio to hear the emergency, right? And basically it said, make sure that you got a full day of food in your car and that you got a full tank of gas because because uh, of all the eclipse stuff that's going down you know, you're going to be stranded because all the grocery stores will be gutted. All the gas stations will be out of gas, right. uh, all that stuff. And I don't think any of that happened. <laughs> and then we got to the Oregon coast where we're going to hang out for a couple of days. And it's like, there's signs everywhere, not only for people trying to entice eclipse watcher people, which was weird, but stuff like, we don't know if all the credit card machines will stop working. Uh, if there's, you know, during the eclipse, we, we don't, you know, so all these warnings about how everything's going to go haywire because of the eclipse. Uh, <laughs> like year 2000, the computers are going to go down. Yeah, yeah, it was kind of Y2K-esque. There's a lot <laughs> of that, you know, and um, so then the only thing we noticed is that, of course, the eclipse was on Monday morning. We left late Sunday morning to head to Seattle. And we were like, oh, let's stop off and get some breakfast. And it's like, uh, no, those places were packed. That, yeah. that was it. That was the only thing, the only problem is we ended up waiting until we got far enough away that we could, you know, eat at a restaurant. <laughs> and so nobody's buying food at the grocery store. They're all going to the restaurants, apparently. That was it. It was, there was, and it wasn't that big of a deal. It was like, oh, we might have to wait 20 minutes. <laughs> that, that, was, that was it. That was the extent of it. So then we got up to um uh to washington state near seattle uh actually a little town called uh monroe and then so we're there and um and then fred calls me up and he's like you know hey is the eclipse uh, like full on where you are because we only get impartial here and uh he pointed out that if you go and stand under a tree then it's kind of like the tree acts as like thousands of little pinhole whatevers right right and and so then uh during the eclipse we went under a tree and we saw, you know, like hundreds of little bananas under the tree, little eclipse shaped bananas. Uh, so there you go. There, there's my whole eclipse experience. You didn't get some of the Amazon glasses. You probably didn't hear about that. Amazon had to do a big recall on all these glasses, special glasses they sold to people for the eclipse. And they recalled it like the day before the eclipse or something or a couple days before the eclipse. <laughs> no, I didn't hear about that. Yeah. What happened? What was wrong? Is that something was wrong with them? Yeah, they don't protect you from the eclipse. <laughs> Staring at the sun. Yeah. So, uh, a lot of people were getting uh, welding masks, right? They're like level fifteen or fourteen, something like that. Yeah. They could watch it that way. Anyway, uh, we saw the eclipse. I wasn't impressed. I don't know. I've seen it before. We had a, a beautiful spot where we were staying, um, where it's like. It was it, it it was a master masterfully artistically done thing, where here we are in the burbs of Seattle, where there's tons of traffic and tons of houses and tons of cars, tons of cement, tons of all that stuff. But if you sit on the deck, and you and it's a, this particular spot is above a river. And it turns out that there's on the other side of the river is a bunch of trees that there's so much lush and life that we could see across to the mountains and, and, and in every direction that we looked, then uh, we saw no structures of any kind, no cars of any kind. No, it's, it's like it was pure wilderness except for the little cabin that we had. And it had everything to do with like, all these trees were just placed in exactly the right places. Nice. Smart. I was thinking, man, that is, that is 
brilliant. <laughs> so um, uh, it was it was a beautiful, beautiful spot. Mm -hmm. uh, that was a nice little relaxing kind of kind of little outing there. Um, and, and Jocelyn's still there. Normally, Jocelyn, uh, you see Jocelyn popping in and out of here. And then, of course, she spoils me 30 times a day. Um, and so now I'm not getting spoiled and I'm I'm really uh, <laughs> feeling the pain from, from, <laughs> from not being spoiled 30 times oh. a day every day. Well, you can spoil uh, you can spoil Paul by sending him stuff. You have like a uh, mailing box people can send stuff to, right? Goodies. Oh, yeah. And people do. We get every once in a while, not very often anymore, used to be like, I don't know, every week or two, we would get a package, a, 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 you know, a, a love package from somebody. That was really cool. Um, and, uh, uh, but we get, yeah, once in a while still we get something, but it's more like once every couple of months. Well, you, you know, you keep pissing people off. We'll stop yeah. sending it. <laughs> yeah. Mark yeah. says, speaking of the eclipse, have either of you had any experience with a solar oven and can you recommend a particular brand? Um, I like that solar oven that we had at the ATC, that, um, the circular tubed one. The tubed one. That thing was yeah. fucking awesome. What's that thing called? Fucking awesome solar oven. That's what it should be called. Uh, yeah. Oh, jeez. <laughs> I normally would, I think I would normally know that, but, uh, we've, I mean, we supported their Kickstarters and, uh, the thing that kind of pisses me off, like, like for one of them, I, I brought their Kickstarter $25,000 and, um, and I think it's I called asked, the Go Sun. Yes, that's it. That's it. And they said that the next time I had a Kickstarter, that they'd send me love. And so mm. I'm on their mailing list, and I supported their Kickstarter too. And I can tell you, they they never returned the favor. Oh. Yeah. So I. Maybe I shouldn't I, be showing everybody their website, but it is a good <laughs> it is a good solar oven. That thing was cooking. There it is. Yeah. There it is. But we have uh, like. Um, something like, uh, I, I think we've got like six solar ovens. Yeah, you got a shell out of them. And, <laughs> and uh, we're I know doing tests. During, during the ATC, we're all like testing all of them. Yeah. Yeah. So if you want to, if you want to see the, all the tests and all the comparisons between all the solar ovens, I guess you got to watch the video. I, I uh, didn't hear the final results, but I imagine it was that ghost on one that everybody loved the best. So guys, I have this awesome video that I'm uh, plan on editing this week, and we're going to show it next week. But it's it's er it's uh, Erica Weisner going through like all the stuff from the ATC and describing it. So uh, next week we'll we'll show that, just so you guys know. Um, all right, real quick, we are doing our PDC, our online PDC. We've had. 1300 students go through that PDC and we are closing it off to the public. So it's, it's only for the next 48 hours is it for sale and you can get it. And it's on a huge sale. We had it for a normal price, 1400 bucks. We took 1200 bucks off. So it's 200 bucks to get the full PDC online PDC. Uh, and it's going away uh, in two days. We're not even going to sell it anymore to the public. And, uh, and we're going to continue. It's not like we're phasing it out or something. That's why we're doing it. No, it's, it's, we're planning on doing some kind of like membership thing. Uh, we're only members uh, of uh, Thrive Through, which we're launching. We'll have access to the PDC. And so this is the last time you can get the PDC just outright by it. It's a lifetime access to, to it and all of its content and all the content we will be adding to it. So there's my, uh, my little splur of the day. Now, Paul, you got in a very interesting email that you kind of read off to me. It was a little fucked up, and I was hoping you'd share it. <laughs> now, is it the is it the email or is it that that thing that the the, the woman posted on the uh, on the YouTube channel? Oh, maybe it was that. It was about homeless people. Homeless oh, yeah, on yeah, the yeah, property. Yeah. Okay. All right. All right. So you know who Justin Rhodes is, right? I do. He's the permaculture He's awesome. guy. Ton of energy, cool is guy. Is our is our is our internet going crappy? Is our internet going crappy? As far as I know, no. It looks good to me. What do you guys okay. say? All right. Yeah, a type little. into the typey thing. Let us know. It says a little. Is it is it me or Josiah? 
Looks good. Thomas said okay, Scott. All right. <laughs> we both sound perfect. So Scott means Game of Thrones, maybe? Yeah. <laughs> oh, don't tell me shit right, about the last right. episode. <laughs> I haven't, I haven't yeah. seen any of them. I don't know. Yeah. Awesome. It's Paul's internet. Okay. Because it's looking really awful to me. So maybe it's time for me to switch over to this other internet thing. Oh. Which we've done before. Yeah, good to switch over now before the uh, before you start reading the email. Before or you start reading that, that, that thing. <laughs> All right. So, so the important part is... Justin Rhodes was here. He's doing his Great American Farm Tour. And so he uh, stopped by here, I think it was like two days ago, maybe three days ago. Um, we had such great conversations off camera. And he, he shared some stuff with me that's, uh, that's, that's very heartening. Um, uh, I, he, when he got off the bus, when he first arrived, he got off the bus, the very first thing that he said was something along the lines of how I supported him when, when he was nobody. And, and uh, so that he had a Kickstarter and I put a whole lot behind him and that's what got him started. I'm sure it had very little to do with me, but um, that was lovely to hear. It's, it seems like um, I, I helped so many people um, hundreds, thousands of people, like one-on-one, -on -one, one at a time. And uh, when the time comes that I need help, maybe 5% come through. And so Justin is, is one of those. So when I did my Kickstarter, Justin came through. Justin told his people multiple times about my Kickstarter. And yeah. of course, Josiah, you told people multiple times about my Kickstarter. Of course. Yeah, so there's- and Help the, each other out, man. Yeah, it's, it's just, uh, it just, mm -hmm. A lot of people talk about doing it, but then very few actually. Okay, now I'm switching my internet. All right. <clears throat> All right, you're back. I'm back. All right. Jeff says, is this email about to piss me off? He says, hell yeah, Josiah got me to support something. To All support right. Kickstarter, I guess. Happy I did. <laughs> so, um, uh, yesterday, uh, uh, Justin put... Uh, a 20 minute video up on YouTube and then another video in a private area, which he's going to share with me apparently later today. And I'll be able to share it with my Patreon people. And so once again, that's patreon.com slash Paul Wheaton. Um, but uh, uh, we gave him the, the base camp tour. Uh, we didn't even, he didn't even do the lab, just base camp. And uh, we covered everything. Like we tried to do it quickly. Uh, I think it turned out really good. So he posted yesterday. He posted the free thing out to YouTube, and uh, I thought it was fun. It was it was a real fun little video, and um, somebody asked the question, uh, "Why is this guy so controversial?" I've read tons of awesome stuff about him and lots of bad stuff. What well, gives? So then there's some discussion, and then and then this morning I get around to like seeing some of this and replying to some of it, and I said, "It's very simple. I have a large audience." individuals come to me and tell me what to think say or do when i choose to follow my own path instead of theirs they are determined to bring the full force of destruction to me kind of an or else scenario so you're seeing people expressing their anger that i am not their puppet now we've talked about this a little bit before and i've mentioned how your dad was here and your dad was saying here's all the things you got to do but after talking to your dad, your dad kind of was nodded his head and was like, yeah, all right. And then we went on with our day. Yeah. Your dad did not try to bring the full destructive force that he had at his disposal to my world. Um, but the thing is, <clears throat> most human beings, that's what they do. If you won't do what I command you to do, then... I will do everything in my world to fuck up your shit. That's called being human. Well, my, uh, also my dad's very, uh, f you know, follows the non-aggression principle. Don't fuck with me and I won't fuck with you kind of thing. Um, <laughs> and he also, he's also uh, very much against like government or meddling, you know, meddling in other people's affairs. Or he tries not to as much as possible. So that, that kind of mindset has a lot to do with it, I think. 
Well, I think there's a lot of people where they want to share, they want to help, and they want to give advice, and they want to talk, and stuff like that. That's all perfectly natural, mm -hmm. and it's it's t it's totally cool to want me to be a different person, <laughs> or even ask me to be a different person. But the problem comes when of one course. expects me to be a different person, yeah. and it's like, and if you do not do as I tell you, I will do everything I can to fuck up your shit. All right, <clears throat> so here comes the comedy. And and so of course you know what are we doing? We're reading we're reading fucking comments from YouTube. <laughs> the so, trolls. What do you think is going to happen here? You know. Yeah, yeah. All right. It's fun though. It's sometimes it's fun. <laughs> now I'm going to go ahead and read this, and then and Josiah, I know you're going to want to pick it apart line by line, and we we'll, and we could totally do that if you want. No, I'll zip my lips and just let you read the whole thing. Okay, I'm just going to read the thing first, and we'll go we'll go from there, but. But this person um, says, Paul, you allow homeless on your property and make them pay rent. Once you invite people onto your land, you should know that they are now your guests and you should treat them much better than you are, including providing a safe place to sleep, live and fresh clean water. Plus, your rules on them living there are so dehumanizing that it is as if you are running your own private concentration camp. If I had a lot of property, I too would love to share with others. But I'd make sure I had the appropriate facilities and at least some kind of mini house and water supply. Plus, I'd provide a le at least a garden for them to work to grow their own food. The ants compound you have is behind a locked gate and inside there is no fresh water and no food. Go in there yourself and physically help them fix that for profit shanty town you created. See, I probably didn't read that right. Go in there for yourself and physically help them fix that for profit shanty town you created. There you go. You make money off it, so you should take the time to keep it up. You give slumlords a bad name. Ready? <laughs> oh, Josiah, do you, do you have something you, you want to say about that? Now, now, I replied, there's another reply, but, but go ahead, Josiah, begin. Well, the first thing I have to say is um, what a fucking insult to people who have been in concentration camps. Like, I don't know. That's just how that you could associate that with a concentration camp is beyond me. And it's pretty fucked up for you to, um, to, to mitigate, uh, minimize what people that actually did go through concentration camps went through. That's kind of fucked. Um, now, the whole point of building this community. All right, first I'm going to hit the homeless thing. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so the, the, the point of the whole, the lab, the reason why you're building this community is to experiment with things and have people build their own fucking houses and build their own gardens and work together and and sell with each other create commerce it's not for the um you're not you're not like hey everybody on welfare come live over here and you don't have to be on welfare anymore i'm going to give you a garden and a house and i'll be the government i'll be the government for you and and then you don't have to do anything um but just enjoy what we've provided for you fuck that that whole that whole mentality needs to go um and as far as you making money, I don't think you're making fucking shit for money for in the lab. If anything, you're spending far more than you're making. But I'll let you speak to that. Yeah, Ant Village runs in the red. The Ant Village project runs in the red. And, and so I'm subsidizing it in the hopes that we build the future of permaculture expertise. Yeah. Um, and but, but okay, all right. So the, the, the big thing is, is that... Um, I think that this person must believe that I built the things that are there and that I am renting out the stuff that's there. And, and, and it's like, no, 
oh, what I did was I rented out bare land and it's called Ant Village because of Aesop's fables, the ant and the grasshopper. And the idea is you come and you learn for yourself. You, you, you prove to yourself how much of an ant you really are. Um, I, I think that, uh, so what you see there now is there are some of those plots that are currently under construction. The ants are working to build their winter shelter and put in their gardens and things of that nature to see if they have what it takes to pull it off. Yeah. Well, the, so the way I look at it, or I would, if I'm building a community, um, or I would like to build one like this, is to think about it as, all right, when's the next time there's going to be like free land or, or land out there that you can just go and pioneer or settle on? Like, that's gone. America was kind of, or Canada, I guess, would be kind of like the last of the just huge open lands where you can go and you can get some, get a little piece of property or a big piece of property and make something out of it for by yourself um, or maybe with a family or a couple of others. Well, this is the opportunity. People have land out there like Paul. They're opening it up to others to come to. They've put in some restrictions like don't be fucking retarded on my property and that you've opened it up so that they can go do that pioneer exploration settlement building thing and in an environment where others are like-minded people are doing the same thing and so don't expect that when you're pioneering or you're going out and just settling making settling in this little piece of property somewhere that people are just gonna fucking build shit for you or give you shit it's, drives me nuts <laughs> it it does sound like there's something there about how if somebody comes that they are a guest of mine and it sounds like what this person is suggesting that i need to build them the structures and i need to feed them and uh, and things of that nature so uh you know which is is not the that's like part. saying the landlord of, of this complex you're a fucking guest when you're renting a room like, or, yeah. <laughs> at, the, at the same time, uh, like, like Fred, Fred's here and, um, you know, Fred stays in Cooper Cabin, a completed structure, mm -hmm. quite sound, quite warm, uh, things of that nature. And, um, and now Fred has, because Fred's worked here for long enough, he has two acres of his own. And of course, now he's starting to build his own thing. Yeah. And so it's kind of like, uh, no, I've, and then at the same time, it's like we got a we got a brand new guy here who's going to try to uh, rent out the structures as well as set up a lot of events here, and um, so that guy is going to you know have a bunk, and and so we've got structures here, we got loads of structures here with perfectly lovely bunks in them. Um, you've stayed in at least one, if not more, yep. and and so you've seen them, you know they're here, uh, and it's kind of like. That's a whole path that we have, and we're willing to, to travel that road. But, you know, it's not it's not the Ant Village path. The Ant Village path is is that I keep my hands off. That's for them to to learn on their own whether they have what it takes to make a go of it. Yeah, and I th obviously this person thinks like you're some kind of super wealthy guy, or that you're making a ton of money off of this and just fucking yeah. people over, and it's just not the case. And, um, and even if it were the case, even if you were a billionaire, why the fuck would people expect you to give them shit for free? You got to work and make your own in this world. You don't just feed off of other people. Jeff says, if I were single, I would 100% move to the ant village, working my ass off to literally build my place in the world. How could that be anything other than amazing? And Dana says, me too. I, I we've had it. We've had a few people that um, have said something to me along the idea of what they want to do is come out here for two weeks and build something amazing and then pop out. Because I mean, they've got a life somewhere else, but it's driving them nuts to see, to not see a, a fantastic example. And so, um, I, I kind of thought that, uh, that that's a wonderful thing. I'd like to work something out with, with people to do that because it's like they're, they're thinking like, oh, I could build something in like a week. Those guys are like a bunch of 
pussies, something like that. So I'm kind of thinking like, all right, yeah, bring it. Let's see, <laughs> let's see what you're going to do. All right. <clears throat> so going, going back to this, uh, this, this post, which is uh, uh, so, so, oh, there's, uh, in, I need to provide a safe place to sleep and live and fresh, clean water. And the fresh, clean water thing, somebody said that the people up here were forced to drink out of mud puddles. That that I don't even you know. I know, like, I remember oh. that. I remember you holding someone by the head on, on the on a mud puddle and just like <laughs> shoving their face into it, and making them drink mud water. No. Drink it. Drink it. <laughs> no, no. You have well. There's wells. You have a guy there that's providing wells to people if they want them. So there's uh, several wells have been dug. I think that there's two up there that are still active. And during the ATC, we built a fucking filter for them so that they yeah. could filter the water if they wanted to for them. Yeah, and and if all else fails, uh, then there's um, uh, come to base camp. We've we've got you know really great, really excellent well water uh, from a well that's 600 feet deep. Um, yeah. <clears throat> so I imagine you drank a lot of that water, uh, so you can attest to whether it's like damn nasty or not. That was I almost thing. died, but I'm I'm fine. Uh, when I was in the, when I was in Oregon or in the Seattle area, it's kind of like, wow, this water is so awful. Chlorinated as fuck. Fluoride even, and chlorine, yum even yum. Even when it's well water, it was like it's kind of swampy. Oh yeah. Like, well, uh, think about the aquifer in uh, in a place with that many people for that long. The aquifer is uh, going to be pretty. Okay. Pretty swampy. Yeah. Touche. Touche. <laughs> yeah. All right. So um, <clears throat> let's see. Uh, uh, plus your, uh, your rules on them living there are so dehumanizing. I, I don't even know what rule that would be. What, what the lock gate on? thing, which we've talked about. I don't know we've talked about the previous thing. I mean, it's pretty fucking libertarian. I mean, there's not like a lot of rules yeah. that I can even, that's actually the only rule I can think of is the lock gate thing. What other really rules are there? Uh, currency. Oh, currency or like moving or getting work outside of the city or in the city or whatever um but that's but that's part of the deal yeah i don't know what's dehumanizing what would be a dehumanizing thing you know what would be dehumanizing is if you promise something and uh that wasn't there and we're like locking the gate and not allowing them to leave or yeah. <laughs> this is a bunch of dehumanizing shit and uh i, I definitely know. I don't get the dehuman. They, I mean, the people that are up there can leave anytime that they want. You know, yeah. so I don't, I don't get the, uh, the, I don't, I don't get a lot of this stuff. And even the locked gate, they, they have a key. So it's, it's, all right, all right. So there's, the, I don't understand the dehumanizing thing. That maybe, maybe that's just grasping at straws. Um, <clears throat> maybe they feel like dogs or or pigs or something when they're there. I don't know. Running. <laughs> Private concentration camp. You know, again, they can leave any time that they want. Um, if I had a lot of property, okay. Now this is if, yeah, this if is, I had a lot of property, which I fucking don't, and if you really did, you would not. But go ahead. Sorry. Yeah, I, I mean that's the whole thing. Is like she, this this person, I think is because based on their screen name, I think it's probably a woman. Um, uh, if she uh, um, had had property, then well, then she could go and run it the way that she thinks is best. And it sounds like the way that she thinks is best is to invite everybody in, and then they'll all be her guests, and she'll build houses for everybody, uh, and then you know serve them food too. Uh, I think. I mean, um, I'm once to... again, she must. Uh, this person must think you're just fucking billionaire, and and it's. And and you should be paying for other people that aren't as smarter or smarter or lucky or however you obtained your wealth, uh, ingenious. But anyway, the ants compound you have. Oh, yeah, you know, I've got to point out. You're bringing up the point of like uh, uh, money. Like, am I a billionaire? And and I want to say, I, I think I've mentioned this in the SmackDown before. And and I mean, like, I make I make a fair bit of money. I make quite. A, there's a lot of money that I make. And then, and then I spend this much. And so then I end up with this much. Yeah. And, and it's kind of like, so in 2014, my income was 80 cents an hour. So, I mean, I just take everything I got, I dump it back into these projects. 
and um, and I am I gotta I gotta confess I am super freaky grateful to all the people who support my Kickstarters and buy my videos and all that stuff because for years I just gave everything away mm -hmm. <laughs> and and uh, and then Adrian uh, you know did a bunch of legwork to get me onto this track to try and have some income and um, you know wow it all it all started to pan out and work out it's it's been lovely. So I'm very, very grateful to all the people that have uh, bought my my stuff, so that I could dump money into these projects and hopefully, you know, leverage mm -hmm. them to crank out more stuff, and at the same time give away more free stuff. Um, yeah. So, okay. Um, the the uh, I guess the point is I'm trying to make I am not a rich dude. <laughs> I am not a wealthy man. I think I live extremely humbly. So I do have a fair bit of coin passing through my hands and I, I, you know, help a lot of people, you know, giving them jobby like things when I can. And then of course, when I was, you know, I had my back trouble, that made it kind of hard, you know, when I'm staring in a ceiling for three months, I can't really bring in as much coin. Um, so moving on with this thing, the ants compound you have is behind a locked gate and inside there is no fresh water and no food. All right, so we talked about the locked gate before. It's like nearly everybody in the area locks their gate because otherwise bad guys will come do bad things. And everybody has a key and the design of the whole property is so that you probably don't even want to leave, but maybe once a week, once a month, something like that. Um, so it's like, you're not going past the gate very often anyway. Yeah, and and all right, so what about gated communities? And gated communities that are, are on city water. That's not fresh fucking water. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, when you say that, it, makes, it reminds me of uh, W.C. Fields. You remember that guy? W.C. Fields, no. No, he's, he's a comedian from like the 20s. From oh, the, uh, the 90s. I wasn't alive. No, yeah, I don't know. And so he had this, he had this bit, he says, because he's always famous for like, you know, being drunk. That's his fame thing. And he says, he says, I don't drink water, fish fucking it. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. So, all is. right. So the, the ants compound you have is behind a lock gate and inside there's no fresh water. No food. So we already covered that there is indeed fresh water. Um, and I mean, of course, if you don't bother to research or whatever, then yeah, I guess mud puddles for you then. Um, <laughs> um, if you can find one. <laughs> um, and, uh, and food, uh, it's like, oh, uh, maybe I should set up, set up like a little vending machine with Fritos, <laughs> you know, <laughs> that way there's, there's food on the left, but hey, check it out. There are all kinds of wild foods there all over the place. If, if you know anything about wild crafting, there is tons and tons of food. Or if you so, know anything about trading with people, there's food. Or if you know anything about gardening, there's food. And if you don't know anything about those, there's people that will teach you. <laughs> So, and then at the same time, let's not forget the gate is not locked. You can always do what everybody else in the United States does, which is to drive to the fucking grocery store and buy some food. <laughs> oh, oh, I thought of a dehumanizing thing. I, okay. I, all right. So I ask that everybody eats organic or better because that way they're, the poop that they put into the Chateau de Pooh or their own systems will be organic or better and not loaded with a bunch of persistent herbicides. Yeah, that's definitely not something humans should be doing. That's very, de that's very dehumanizing. Some people might think that that's dehumanizing. And so because, you know, they, they prefer to get um, Oreos, maybe, you know, and Diet mm -hmm. Coke. Like well, that's now, if I were a government, there's no fucking way I'd put a requirement that everybody eat organic. Um, but if I am owning my own property and I am inviting people to live on that property and I'm telling them the rules before they're getting onto the property or uh, offering, letting them out if they don't agree to the rules on my own property, 
um, I'm totally fine with that. Do whatever. Yeah, whatever I, I kind of feel want. like you make it. A, you say, okay, here's the deal for this property in advance, and we know that 99% of the world is like going to be totally not okay with this, but we mm -hmm. don't need 100% of the world to live on this one property. We we only need a few, and and so we've set up you know these restrictions. We're looking for people that are keen on the same things that we're keen on, not yeah. not you know all these other people. All right, so. Uh, go in there yourself and physically help them fix that for-profit shanty town. Again, it's not for-profit. It's it's going. It's in the, it runs in the red. You created. Uh, you make money off it. I I do not make money off it. Uh, so you should take the time to keep it up. Uh, you give slum lords a bad name. I'm not sure if I should be proud of that or not. Um, yeah, that's weird. Uh, I, I've never heard slum lord be used in a positive manner. So uh, I've never like, I don't think it's you that's giving them the bad name. <laughs> All right. So um, I replied, what ridiculous tripe. Your post is one big gob of misinformation. Why would you ever post such awful balderdash? Everybody up there can leave whenever they want. Ant Village is where a person can rent an acre of raw land to find out if they have what it takes to build a structure, grow a garden, and make it through a Montana way. Hence the name Ant Village refers to Aesop's fable of the ant and the grasshopper. Okay. I would say that arguments require facts. Other than that, it's not an argument. Show you me know, some facts and evidence. I, I, I want to take that a little, in a slightly different direction. All right. I, I am not, I love to have discussions with people and they don't have to provide facts. They don't have to like prove whatever their point is or stuff like that. I enjoy having you know, sharing thoughts and ideas. And I think that it's the stuff where there are no facts is where our space is to potentially grow into the future. Um, but, but this is just mean and hateful. Yeah, this is not, this was set up as an argument. It wasn't set up as like a philosophical philosophy discussion or anything like that. It was, it was, here's, here's how you're fucked up. No real facts or evidence, but you know, yeah. fuck you. It, uh, it reminds me of Cunningham's Law. Are you familiar with Cunningham's Law? I am. Okay, so Cunningham's Law states that if you go onto the internet, and Cunningham is Ward Cunningham, the guy that invented Wiki. And so uh, if you go on the internet and you want to get an answer to a question, then what you do is you do not ask the question, but instead what you do is you state bullshit. Mm -hmm. And then you'll get you're more likely to get a much better answer and more answers and stuff like that because you state crazy bullshit and then everybody comes out of the woodwork to tell you how wrong you are. And you replied to it. And, and so the thing is, is that <laughs> here we are and, and I, am, I am falling prey to Cunningham's law. I'm using airtime on the permaculture smackdown to reply to this this tribe this this mean spirited awfulness instead of taking the time where somebody because a lot of people wrote very lovely positive things in here too yeah and so, but i'm not addressing any of that um and of course that's just because i'm so fucking arrogant that somebody says something nice about me i just think well, damn right <laughs> 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 so uh, but but here we I I'm just kind of thinking like um, I I did a I I was asked by Diego to do a podcast on his he's got a lovely podcast I have not listened to much of it but I've heard a lot of people say really great about Diego really great things about Diego Footer's podcasts mm -hmm. uh, Permaculture Voices and of course you know he started with the conference and now he's moved on to doing these podcasts and he's doing a lot with YouTube now too but he had me on a couple of months ago for a podcast and and his question was um something about like why do i get that's all the negative shit that was the negative shit podcast right yeah why do i get the most negative shit right why, how is it i'm getting so much negative shit and first i kind of think i'm i'm not getting the most you know who's getting the most it's it's either sepp holzer or willie smith's and um, and I've talked to Willie about some of the negative shit that he's gotten, mm. and, and um, uh, I've got tons and tons and tons to share down that road that I'm going to choose to not share. 
Instead, I'm going to go with like uh, the stuff that's known about Sepholzer. And, and the thing is, is that um, there was a woman who hired Sepholzer to Sepify her property. Sep shows up, he's halfway done. She kicks him off and says, this place is, is a disaster. Now, of course, whenever you're in the middle of a bunch of earthworks, it does look a lot like uh, strip mining is going on until, you know, all the seeds are planted and they get- Especially when you're terracing. Yeah. Yeah, it looks it looks terrible until it's all done and it's had a chance to, to grow back. So she kicked him off and then she went on this campaign where for years her life's work was to badmouth Seb Holzer. And then that wasn't enough. So she wrote a book about what a horrible monster Seb Holzer is. And and then even and putting a pause on that for just a moment and backing up a few years, Sepp Holzer's first book called The Rebel Farmer, I'd say 70% of that book is about all the bullshit he went through to get to where he is. Yeah. And, and so it's kind of like Joel Salatin's book, Everything I Want to Do is Illegal. Yep. So um, uh, basically they tried to put Sepp into the funny farm because they thought he was fucking nuts. And they've done all, they've, they've, he's paid more agricultural fines than anybody else in all of Europe. Um, all right, so now we come back to the woman who wrote a book about what a monster he is. And finally, and she just kept going on and on. She had her book, she's doing a book tour. Her life is dedicated to destroying Sepp Holzer. Mm -hmm. Finally, it goes to court. The judge says, Okay, lady, all your stuff, the book, that property that he was working on, all your money, all of your everything now belongs to Sepp Holzer. And you get to go hang out in the pokey for three years. Uh, so, for like, like what charge did she get? Well, it's Austria, you know, so I'm sure it, whatever charge it was, it was in the German language. They don't have like freedom. But of I speech. mean, it's defamation. It's defamation. Sure. You know, and so is it is, I mean, basically, I imagine what happened was, is that all you had to do is prove that she's full of shit and that she's, she's intentionally trying to defame Sepp Holzer. Right. You know, which she was, and it, it is shit. The thing is, is that, you know, um, uh, Diego was trying to say, why are you getting more shit? Now, of course, the thing I brought up is like, so Diego, I noticed you're putting out podcasts and videos and stuff now. Let me guess. You're starting to get a bunch of hate mail. Yeah. You're getting a bunch of shit. You're getting a bunch of nasty grams. And people are publicly trying to say, you're a fucktard. And, and so it's like, yes, that is. Welcome, welcome to the public internet sphere. Yeah. Wow. And, and um, the, the other thing is, is that it's kind of like, um, and it, man, I want to share some stuff I'm not allowed to share. Okay. So I'm going to, I'm going to instead go down a path of like, in the world of permaculture, people treat it a bit like a religion. And, and pretty much what it is, is that people uh, find a permaculture recipe that works really great for them. And so then to them, that is permaculture. That that single recipe is permaculture. And it, everything else is shit. And everything else is not permaculture. Yeah. But the reality is, is that that's one recipe from a cookbook. And there are aisles and aisles and aisles of shelves in the library full of cookbooks for recipes for permaculture. Not really. I wish there was. But, <laughs> you know, metaphorically speaking. Right. There's a lot. A lot more coming out. There's so many more books being published all the time. There's a lot out there. Right, 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 right. So, um, I guess the big thing is, is that um, there is an incredible amount of people that are so passionate about their recipe and that no, there is no other recipe that that's what's kind of, this is the dark side of permaculture. This is what's kind of fucking up all of permaculture. Um, some people, oh, Julia, save that question. <laughs> so, um, uh, uh, oh, shit, now I lost my train of thought. 
<laughs> well, I got, all right, so we have a question. Uh, the question is, Jeff asks, I asked this partially in jest, but also curious because I am also the kind of person that helps whenever I can. Paul mentioned that only about 5% of the people you help support you in return. Is it possible that you're just bad at helping people? Uh, <laughs> you're just helping the wrong people, or do people just suck? <laughs> I, would, I think you're helping the wrong people. I think it's all of the above. I mean, <laughs> yeah. uh, sometimes I go to help people and it doesn't work out. You know, like I'll send a bunch of attention to their Kickstarter or I'll try to promote whatever it is that is their workshop or whatever, and it doesn't turn into anything. And it's kind of like, well, damn. Um, <clears throat> I tried, though. I tried. And, and, you know, on the flip side of it, a lot of people try to help me in return, and sometimes it doesn't work. But I'm glad that they tried. Um, all right, so what were the options? The options were that I suck at it, which I'm embracing as like, oh, that's probably a good 40% of it there. <laughs> what's, Helping what's the wrong that? people. Oh, um, I mean, that's subjective, isn't it? I mean, it's kind of like, I'm, I've, I know I've helped people, like, like the ghost son, the ghost son people. That is a good uh, a solar oven. That's an amazing solar oven. And they said they would help me in return, and they did not, those fucking liars. <laughs> now, uh, are they good people or bad people? Am I helping bad people? Are they the wrong people? Are they the right people? See, it's, it's like so much squishier than that. I think it was good that I helped them. I think it was good that I, I, I put a shout out for them. I moved $25,000 of the product. And at the same time, my people got a lot of cool solar ovens. Yeah. And so it's like. But I, there are, there are people that you definitely avoid helping for sure. Yeah. Um, yeah, but the, the, then there's the gray zone where it's like, don't know until I try helping this person. Because you just, if they don't fall into the categories I usually avoid, uh, so we'll just try it out. Well, the other thing is, is I, I don't, like, like, there's, like this woman here and a few other people on the internet, they're more than happy to publicly throw me under the bus. Yeah. And not only that, but they'll throw me under the bus for stuff I didn't do, um, such as this woman here. Um, but there are people that have a big name in permaculture. I'm, I'm thinking of one right now where I helped this man a lot. In fact, I kind of wonder if people would even recognize his name today if it weren't for me helping him get his start. And then um, I'm trying to like find a way to navigate other people's private stuff Burra, so this is not recognized. Who, Burra, who manages the forums, tried to do a favor for the guy and help him out, and the guy lost his shit, and he was mean to Burra. And so now we do not help that guy anymore. But I do not mention his name. I don't throw him under the bus. Nothing like that. I just, I just don't help that guy anymore. Yeah. And now it kind of seems like his permaculture career has ended. Um, but I don't think that's because of me not helping him. I think it's because Burrow is not the only person that he was mean to. Yeah. Or is it possible that you just suck at helping people, Paul? Which is, I think, the first one. <laughs> I suck at, at helping people. I try. And, and it's like I'm, I'm willing to embrace that 40% of the time I go to help somebody and it doesn't work out. So I, I clearly suck at it. That's proof that I suck at it. So what, were the, so then we, what was the first one then? What was the, the first one is you just suck at helping people. Second one is uh, you're just helping the wrong people. And the third one was do people just suck? Do people just suck? There's some of that too. And then it, that's very relative. Well, the, the people that suck or, and helping the wrong people fall very closely together. <laughs> So there's people that you know are just going to suck and you just don't help them. Well, I, I mean, I find out it takes, I mean, everybody seems awesome until you really get to know them. Right. And then there's only a few that still are awesome. And most of them, it's kind of like, I choose to not associate with you anymore. 
um, kind of a kind of a thing. And mm -hmm. and so there's there's a lot of that. Uh, and so, but really, it's about trying. In fact, I when Justin was here, I had this really wonderful, wonderful conversation with him. Um, he spent way too long here. He needed to leave, and we just were enjoying. It's so rare you get to talk to somebody who's like come this far, right? And you can share stories. Um, but but basically, the end of it was is you gotta try. You gotta you gotta try the things. You, you gotta try and see if you can make the world a better place. Yeah. And, and Justin's a Christian. Justin's a big time Christian. Yeah. And and so when you're a Christian, isn't a big part of it like to spread the uh, the glory of God, to spread joy? I mean, it seems like a lot of Christians, their whole mission is is to hate people. <laughs> Which, I haven't had that experience. Most of my experience with Christians has been very positive. Okay. I'm not one myself, but um, but I, I've I've never had a bad uh, maybe one or two, but most experiences are good. So um, uh, the the important thing here is is that I think that Justin's doing a great job of spreading joy and the glory of God. He's doing it for realsies. Yeah. I mean. You see, he's got like, what, 200,000 YouTube subscribers. And he gets up there and he's so full of life and so happy as he does his videos. And he's showing them such natural, wonderful things of the world. It's such real, authentic, glorious stuff. And, and so that's, that's the real thing. Um, and, and so now I think that, and, and maybe there's some people that can that can uh, type on the chatty thing to see if they agree with me or not. But but I know that a lot of people they hear somebody's a Christian and they kind of take two steps back and like oh shit <laughs> here it comes and, <laughs> and and I think that the reason why they do that is is through experience yeah. and and I love the expression how a church is not a, a showcase for saints it's a hospital for sinners. So somebody says I'm a Christian, and it's kind of like they're, what they're saying is, is like, I'm kind of fucked up, but I'm working on it. And if you think this is bad, you should have seen me before church. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think that all depends. I mean, there's. I think that's not the majority. I think the majority of people are just they're raised with it. They're good, good Christians. Um, the problem is though, is that that's what's shoved in your face or, or, you know, the, the negative experiences people have with Christianity is what's shoved in their face or the evangelicals, the, the, the hardcore or people that are desperately trying to convert you, things like that, that, that gets overwhelming and you avoid it at that point. You hear that you're like, I just don't want to deal with it. Um, same thing with like Muslims, Muslims get a bad rap because, uh, some of them are blowing shit up. And it's not like all the Muslims are blowing shit up. <laughs> yeah, yeah. There's a lot of great Muslims out there that are saying, would you guys stop blowing shit up? Yeah, it depends. Good. Yeah, Dana. It's just like permaculture. It depends. Yeah, it's like Jeff, Jeff Lawton. He's a Muslim. I don't think he's blowing anything up. Yeah, no, he's doing great things. And yeah. uh, I, I like, I like, uh, I like Christians. I like that they have the community thing going on which a lot of people that are atheists do not have. They don't respect their neighbors or help their neighbors or do these community canning things. And all, there's a lot. And, and it's not just Christians. It's Mormons and there's a lot of religious. Um, it's not, I like the community aspect of it a great deal and how they help each other. Um, that, that is, I think, a great thing. So there are, for every possible religion or um religious vacuum there are people uh, that are better than others yeah <clears throat> exactly time and uh all of these people are human beings and um i i kind of think it comes full circle i mean christianity is one of those that's kind of famous for the whole thing of you have to do as i say you have to think the thoughts i tell you to think you have to uh, say the things i tell you to say and do the things i tell you to do and if you don't, then I will do everything in my power to bring a world of hurt to your door. Um, and, and so there are some like that. But that, the same thing can be said for some vegans. And the same thing could be said for some feminists. Yep. 
same thing could be said for some misogynists. They're equal airtime. <laughs> Democrats, Republicans, every every in or ist has him. <laughs> yes. yes. All right. <laughs> So there you go, Permaculture Smackdown. We did a lot of Smackdown today. I think we did a fair, in our Smackdown stuff, I think made the world a better place, smacking yes. down this crazy person on YouTube. And now I wanna, uh, cause we're almost out of time. I, I wanna address something that Julia said, uh, and I can't see it now cause there's so many people writing chat things. <laughs> yeah, you chat, have to scroll up quite a ways. But, but Julia said something about, um, uh, when am I going to write my book? And my answer to that is, is that I currently have four books in the hopper and one of them I was, I've actually been working on in the last week. And the, the big thing that stops me from taking a book and finishing it and publishing it and getting it out there has to do with the fact that it's kind of like, like, like the book that I'm working, I've been working on in the last week is one where it's kind of like I'm writing it, not because it's the book that I think people want from me the most. I'm writing it because it's the thing I feel the need to say the most. <laughs> and and then of course comes the whole concept of like after writing it and saying what I want to say then there's an enormous amount of work to actually get it into a publishable format and get it in front of people and things like that. If I even did a Kickstarter for it, I don't think people would really, I don't think the Kickstarter would get funded. And if I uh, uh, tried to put it up and sell it, I mean, I might, it might be one of those things where I sell seven copies all time. And so um, I, it's kind of like the whole thing where it's like, I don't really want to do the work to finish it, but I do feel the need to write it because I write so much as Julia knows. <laughs> She's probably read all the crap I write on Permies all every day. Um, so it's kind of like I, I wish I wish I had a person who was extremely self propelled and would take care of a lot of that shit. And if that if I had such a person in my world, then um, I would I, I would probably get these books done. In fact, for a while there, um, there was a gal on Permies named AJ, and um, and AJ worked with me once a week to work on a different book to make sure it had strong forward velocity every week, and um, so that thing was. That thing's moved along quite a ways. It's more than half done. Um, <clears throat> but then, you know, AJ uh, um, wasn't getting paid anything, and so she went and found other things to do. <laughs> I think um, writing a book, especially for people in our situation, can be difficult when you're thinking of there's, there's so much you want to get out there and such a big picture idea um it's it's because it's not like you're writing a book on how to fix a car you're writing a book on how to fix the earth <laughs> it's like such a huge topic and you want to get it right that's going to cause a lot of it's going to take a long time if it ever gets completed at all so it's yeah. it's finding those uh, those that's some big mental block and trying to get over that's got to be very difficult i don't have a problem with that i don't think maybe if I maybe I should knock on wood I'm knocking on wood <laughs> uh, I mean the, the problem that I have is that I know that there's going to be a step at some point that um, I don't want to do yeah I don't want to mess with it I'm sick to death of everything with Amazon like like selling shit on Amazon um, uh, my DVDs finally ran out at Amazon and I'm not gonna put any more up there uh, the cards do fine at Amazon, but it's kind of like, you know, Amazon keeps sending me these emails about things I have to be aware of and do or whatever. And it's like, I just, I just don't even want to mess with that anymore. I, I would really like it if somebody could contact me and say that they sell shit on Amazon and they'll just, you know, they'll I'm, deal with all that shit. <laughs> yeah. So that they, they buy, they'll say, they'll call me up and they say, I want 10 cases of the playing cards. 
sent to Amazon. We stick the stickers on them and out they go. And I got, you know, a wholesale price for the cards. No. It's like fantastic. Um, and of course, Christmas is coming up. Uh, but I'll, we'll start. Oh, and I've got, actually, I've got a shipment of cards coming because I'm almost out of cards. The shipment. So we've got a thing right now where people can pre-order uh, the cards if they buy them by a dozen or more. Um, because when Christmas comes, people will buy like four dozen and then give them to friends and then yep. stuff like that. Meet their gift giving obligations. <laughs> <laughs> and Talking suffers. With, Kim, with, with permaculture along the way. Okay, so now Julia's saying, you know, that's pretty much what Kickstarter is for, figuring out if there's a market for a particular thing. And it's like, that's that's true. Um, <clears throat> and at the same time, I, I cannot do a Kickstarter for something like this unless unless it's all done. So like if I write the whole book and then there's this whole thing. And that's the other thing too, is it's like, okay, is there a service where I just give them my book and then they take it from there? For marketing? For whatever. I don't know. Yeah, a publisher. It's called a publisher. See, uh, <laughs> you know, yeah. So then what you do is you send you send your book to the publisher, and the publisher just you know tells you whether or not they'll publish it. Or uh, I actually had uh, New Society Press contact me, and they wanted me to write a book. I whipped out a chapter in a few hours, and I sent it to them. And I was thinking, like, man, the chap this chapter for this book is fucking awesome. And I sent it to them, and like one of the things I said was the whole thing about uh, weeds are nature's uh, nature's way of, of of telling you that she's not your personal bitch. Mm -hmm. And uh, so New Society wrote back to me and said that I'd have to remove colloquialisms like that, that they won't publish a colloquialism like that. Well, th that's like pretty much all, Paul. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> So it's like, so I, I think going down publisher road isn't really for me either. Yeah. Uh, Luckily there's a bunch of publishers, but it's hard. It's difficult for authors to get in with publishers for sure. So as you know, Julia, uh, one of mm -hmm. my little, I don't know, Paulisms, if you will, the one of the rules that I live by is obligation is poison. So if I do a Kickstarter and it succeeds, now I have the obligation to provide the book, but if I have no idea how to do it other than to stick it in the PDF file as a shitty PDF, you know, or if, if part of the part of the thing is to have a physical book, I mean, there's all kinds of stuff in that space that I don't know and I don't want to know. But it would be great if there was somebody that's like, you know, a fucking pro at something like that. And they would say they take care of everything for two thousand dollars. And here's what I do. I do a two thousand dollar Kickstarter. <laughs> then I got the two thousand dollars. I'm go like, here's your fucking two thousand dollars, and then we're done. And so here's Thomas. Thomas says he's going to help. Thomas, do I? I probably have no idea who the fuck you are, but uh, <laughs> but awesome. Be my yeah, I was, bitch. <laughs> I was just looking at some books that are from like some fairly uh, small time people, trying to figure out what they're using for publishing. No, I, so I could get a lot more done if I had somebody in my court that would, and it's like, and I kind of feel like, um, oh, Thomas has this hand up. Check that out. And now his hand went down or his thing, something moved. I don't know. Say me, me, me. Yeah, he's putting his, raising his hand. Okay. So. Um, Permanent I, publications. I, How about them? Anyway. Yeah, I've talked to Maddie. Um, um so when I came out with the playing cards, so when I, I've come out with Kickstarters and I asked for Maddie's help, and I've, hel I've helped Maddie a bunch of times. And when I came out with Kickstarters, I asked for Maddie's help. But Maddie says, I don't do Kickstarters. And then like, when that came up, I asked Maddie, and Maddie said something like, because I, I told her the society, and she says, yeah, yeah, I'll do it. I'll publish your stuff, because that's just you being you. And then it was like a little while after that, I came out with the playing cards, and she was really pissed off that there weren't more women in the cards, and our relationship has been strained ever since. Mm. So I love Maddie. I love what she's doing. I want to support Maddie forever and ever, um, but I kind of get the impression that Maddie has elected to not support me, because my playing cards don't have enough women in them. 
Um, and, and it's like, that's her choice. She gets to choose that kind of stuff. Um, yeah. and, and I think at my uh, keynote, I made a pretty good case of like, this isn't sexism. This is like, we don't, we don't have enough women stepping up to, to do this stuff. Like who's, you know, when, when I was helping Diego select who are the keynote speakers, I was focusing on like, who are the, who are the big players that are reversing desertification? And so Alan Savory, Willie Smith, Jeff Lott, and, um, you know, et cetera. And so it's like, so who would be the woman in this case? And even if you're not known, make yourself known, like get in touch. Sure. Tell, tell us what you're doing. I mean, well, the function of a keynote is to sell tickets. Yeah. Oh, it's like, okay, so you got to have some kind of fame in order to be able, like we list your name on the thing. It's going to sell some tickets. Oh, I want to go and see that guy, right. you know? And in the end, Dr. Lane Ingham was, was a keynote. There were seven keynotes. And so uh, um, it wasn't just guys, um, uh, but, you know, there, there was no woman that was like um, the, big, the big reversing desertification woman. And, and so I, it's kind of like, okay, so I, that makes me a sexist, I guess. Yeah. I don't understand how that, so I, I think I, I did a pretty good job of proving that it's not an act of sexism. It's, it's, uh, it's an act of like, we need more, we need more women to, to chase into this field. And so who's volunteering first? Uh, maybe Maddie should, should, uh, should jump in there and, and uh, fill that role. In addition to all the other things that she's doing, just so that yeah. there's a woman doing it. And it's not like we won't help you out to get some fame. Let us know what you're doing. And if it's awesome, we're going to talk about it. We're going to share okay. it. Yeah, absolutely. All right. On that note, time is up, Paul. We are over. Eight minutes over, man. Okay. So the, you're just going to have to wait till next week, everybody. Same time next week, uh, you can head over to tv.permethos.com. Hey, we got a new show. It's called, uh, <laughs> it is called Broker Free. Hey, what's it called? Fired and Free. Uh, Fired and Free on PETV. You can check it out on the Permethos YouTube channel. Awesome, man. Uh, let's stick around. For those that are uh, the Patreons, the supporters that are in, in the software with us right now, stick around. Uh, we, we hang out for an extra five or ten minutes after each show and just talked with you. We so uh, about all those other people that aren't here. Yeah, so uh, stick around, and the rest of you, we'll see you next week. Bye. <laughs>